Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on the next mode of operation, the output feedback mode, which is also called as OFB. Let's see what we are going to learn in today's presentation. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, we will understand the encryption and decryption of OFB. Outcome number two, we will know the important differences of working of OFB and CFB. And outcome number three, we will know the pros and cons of OFB. We know basically there are five block cipher modes of operation. Number one, the electronic code book ECB. Number two, the cipher block chaining CBC. Number three, the cipher feedback mode CFB. Number four, the output feedback mode OFB. And number five, the last one, the counter mode. We are going to see about the output feedback mode in this presentation. So what I'm going to do is instead of projecting the theoretical points, I'm going to directly show you the encryption and decryption of OFB so that I can easily compare that with CFB. In case you are watching this lecture directly, I request you to watch my previous lecture, the cipher feedback mode so that you will gain better insights about CFB and OFB. Let's dive into OFB. In OFB, we are going to see about the encryption of OFB. Here also we are having an initialization vector like what we had in CFB. This initialization vector is a nonce which is also called as number ones and this is given to the encryption algorithm. We know this encryption algorithm may be any block cipher like DES or AES. Obviously it takes the input as well as the key. Now this key is also common throughout the process because this is symmetric encryption and the output is actually the cipher text generally. But here we are not encrypting the plain text, right? So we will not call that as a cipher text because if the plain text is encrypted, then we will call that output as cipher text. In this case, we are not getting the cipher text here because we are getting the encrypted text, which is for this nonce. Now the output of this encryption algorithm or encryption function is given to this XR function where this XR function is going to take this output and the plain text. Now the XR of this plain text and this output is actually the cipher text. C1 is generated. What about C2? For generating C2, we require P2, isn't it? So P2 is going to be XOR with the output of the encrypt function, where this encrypt function takes two inputs. One is obviously the key, and the other one is the output of the previous encryption. So the output of the previous encryption is given as an input to the next ciphertext generation. So this output is XOR with P2 so as to generate C2. So C2 is now generated. This process is continued in order to generate all the cipher text for all the plain text blocks. Now, what are all the important differences of OFB when we compare with CFB? In CFB, we had an initialization vector. Here also we are having an initialization vector, but here it is nonce. And then the output is given to the encryption function. Now this output, if you take B bits are generated, we selected only S bits. Do you remember? In CFB, we selected only S bits and we discarded B minus S bits. Whereas here, all the bits that are coming out of this encryption function as the encrypted text, all bits are taken. So that is one of the key differences. And one more important key difference between OFB and CFB is that in CFB, the cipher text is acting as the feedback, right? Can you recollect? The previous block cipher text was actually given for generating the next block cipher text. For C2, C1 was actually used. Here, C1 is not used. Rather, the output of the encryption function or the output of the encryption algorithm is acting as an input for the next ciphertext generation, which is C2. So this output is going to be given for generating C3 and this is continued so on and so forth so as to generate all the ciphertext. So if you keenly observe here, CFB and OFB are similar in most of the cases in terms of operation, but the important differences between CFB and OFB is that in CFB, we selected only S bits and the previous block ciphertext was acting as one of the inputs for generating the next block ciphertext. Whereas here, there are no selected bits, rather all bits are used for generating the ciphertext. At the same time, the output of the encryption function or the output of the encryption algorithm is going to act as an input for generating the ciphertext of the next block. For example, for P2, the previous block encryption function's output is required. And also in CFB, we saw shift registers coming into action and it does S bit left shift. So these are all the important differences between CFB and OFB. And this is about the OFB encryption. And coming to the decryption, the decryption is straightforward. 
For generating the plain text, we need the cipher text. Also, we need the same encryption function and the key. And this initialization vector nonce is required. I'll show the diagram, then it will be easy for you to understand. Now we are looking at the OFB decryption. Decryption, the same nonce is given to the encryption function or encryption algorithm, the same key, and the output is given to the XOR function, where this XOR is going to be carried out for the output of the encryption function and C1 in order to recover P1. Similarly, this output is required for recovering P2. So this is about the decryption of OFB. Now talking about the encryption and decryption of OFB, this OFB invites a lot of advantages and disadvantages. Let's now see the pros and cons of OFB. And talking about the first advantage of OFB method is that the bit errors in transmission do not propagate. Let me show the encryption diagram. Let's see we are taking the C1 block. And there is a transmission error or a bit error in C1. Now what happens actually? From C1 you can recover only P1, isn't it? So only the recovered value of P1 is affected. And subsequent plain text that is P2 or P3 or up to Pn are not affected. Whereas in CFB if you see the C1 was actually acting as one of the inputs for the encryption function for generating the ciphertext of the next block. Whereas here the C1, C2, C3 up to Cn all are independent text. Normally ciphertext only will be sent over the network, isn't it? We don't want the plain text to be sent as a plain text. Because we need security, we don't want our plain text to be disclosed. And that is why we are converting the plain text and sending only ciphertext. So if there is a transmission error in C1, that is definitely not going to affect C2, C3 or any block. If C1 is encountering transmission error, only recovered P1 will be affected, which is not certainly going to affect P2 or P3 or Pn. And the next advantage is that if you have the same plain text and if you have the same key, then you will have different cipher text here because basically it is depending on the output of the previous encryption. So that is why for the same plain text and for the same key, we cannot expect the same cipher text. The cipher text will be obviously different. And coming to the third advantage, you can take the plain text length can be of any random choice. I will just show the encryption of OFB now. Can you see here, I haven't mentioned any bit size. The size of P1 is left to the choice of the user. User can determine what is the size he required in order to perform with this encryption and decryption. And that is why this point says that the plain text length can be of random choice. These are all the various pros of output feedback mode. And coming to the disadvantage, the main disadvantage is that the sender and receiver must be synced. Because we are using an initialization vector which is nonce here, and we expect the sender and receiver to be synced. And coming to the second drawback, this OFB when compared to CFB, OFB is more vulnerable to message stream modification attack. What do you mean by this? Let's assume we are complementing a bit in the ciphertext. I mean, the attacker receives a ciphertext. And let's assume the attacker is complementing a bit in the ciphertext. Now what happens? Obviously the bit which is complemented in the ciphertext will also have an impact on the plain text. Isn't it? So what I mean to say here is a bit which is complemented in the cipher text will also complement the corresponding bit in the recovered plain text. We want to recover P1. So we want C1. Let's assume an attacker is modifying a bit in C1. So the place where the bit was complemented, the same place in P1, the bit will be complemented. This isn't a big deal. If an attacker is very diligent, he can do the modification attack in such a way that he can launch an attack in an intelligent manner by adjusting the checksum and the data portion of the message. And coming to the third drawback, this is not parallelizable. Why it is not parallelizable? Because say you want C2. You may not need C1, but you need the output of the previous block's encryption function. So this output is actually necessary for generating the ciphertext of the next round. We may not be needing this, but we need this. So that is why this is not parallelizable. And coming to the last disadvantage, obviously the initialization vector, which is the nonce and the keys must be regenerated every time, which seems to be a disadvantage. But as far as security is concerned, it's always good that the IVs and keys are regenerated. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the encryption and decryption of OFB. We know the differences of working of OFB from CFB. And we also have seen the pros and cons of OFB. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.